Now on the left is an example of an invoice you may receive, something that looks very familiar to you if you've ever picked up documents from a shipper. When you fill out the AC Manifest Fax form, you're going to want to make sure that you look at necessary fields on invoices to make sure that Border Connect receives the proper information that we are looking for. So we'll start from the top on the AC Manifest Fax form. The carrier name is ABC Carriers. It looked like this person wanted an ACE cover sheet fax back for a barcoded ACE cover sheet, which is convenient because once we finish processing the manifest, we're going to send a driver copy back his ACE cover sheet. And what that's going to have on it is it's going to have a barcoded trip number on it that he can then provide to the officer who can easily scan it or key it in from that point. He put in his trip number, the port of arrival, the ETA. Uh, he put in his truck unit number, the truck plate, where the plate is issued, uh, as well as the trailer information and a seal. He put in his name, uh, his cell phone number. I always recommend putting in a cell phone number because if we are missing any, any information or we can't read something, for example, you're going to always want to put that uh, the driver's cell phone number in there uh, so we can uh, give you a call back and verify the information that we're missing or can't read. Looks like he put in his email address as well, which is fine because then uh, if the driver has you know access to his email while he's on the road, we can just send him an email that way as well. Just an added uh, area, an added element of communication. Looks like uh, his team driver, Steve Anderson, is on there. Uh, he's got the shipment control number. He selected the shipment type and the shipper and consignee. For the shipper and consignee, if you look on the left, we're going to look at this customs invoice. Um, so for the shipper he used at the top, top left of the invoice, he has Orion Syndicate. So that's where the exporter, shipper, seller, and mailing address is, as you can see by this invoice. And he put that in, which is correct. He followed that exactly. For the consignee and mailing address, it's going to California. It looks like at Stars Police Station. So right away, he's able to know exactly where he's picking up and exactly where the shipment is going. And he entered it correctly. Uh, and now if you look down on the invoice, you'll see the description of goods as well as a PAP sticker. He put the lumber in there. Description of goods on the fax form is lumber. Um, and he also followed the quantity properly as well, 12 units. And he got the shipping weight as well. 46,500 and he hand wrote that in there. So this is a perfect example of uh, the, the information we need. Um, and for the shipping control number, he also went off the sticker, which is exactly what you're looking for. Once you assign a sticker to it, essentially that is your shipping control number and you would put that in there. So this is a perfect example of how to take information from an invoice and put it onto one of Border Connect's AC Manifest Fax forms. Now, this is how to fill out a Border Connect ACI e-manifest fax form. So this one's going into Canada as opposed to the last one, which is going into the U.S. This one here, uh, you can see that he took the vendor for the shipper, and he used, which is fine because you actually, you don't necessarily want to use the vendor uh, at all, actually, because customs want exactly where it's coming from. They want to know where the shipment was actually being picked up from. In this case, if you look at the bottom of this Canada Customs invoice, the originator is what you're looking for. And as you can see, the originator is the same as vendor. So this is filled out correctly. Stars Police Station in Raccoon City, California, that is where it's actually being picked up from. So try not to use a vendor at all. Always use uh, an originator. Um, if the originator is, not, is left blank or there is no originator and you just have a vendor, but that's not where you actually picked up from, um, usually the correct address will be the exporter's name. And on this invoice, this Canada Customs invoice, you'll see that the exporter is the same as the vendor. For the consignee, you can see here, uh, it's clearly stated on the Canada Customs invoice. And uh, the purchaser, um, that has nothing to do with the logistics of the shipment. This has something to do with the finances of this transaction, but it's not information that Border Connect will need, nor is it going to be a consignee. The consignee is clearly listed in box four of this Canada Customs Invoice, and that is the Orion Syndicate, which was entered on the consignee block of the ACI fax form. And the description of goods is pretty straightforward. It has medical supplies. It looks like he combined the line items, which is exactly what we're looking for, just a total quantity, um, 450 packages. Now you'll see that there is a piece count. We don't want a piece count. We want the lowest external package count because that when the officer pops, if the officer ever pops open the trailer, he's not going to see those, you know, 25,130 pieces and the 90,250 pieces. He's going to pop it open and he's going to see the packages on the skids. So he's going to see, you know, 40 or 50 boxes per skid. Um, so it, you, you want them to, to, you want to put the lowest external package count always. And I would recommend doing that for both ACE and ACI. I know with ACI, they haven't quite fully stated that. Um, but we've noticed some penalties coming in regarding, um, not putting the proper external package count in. So they don't officially say that with ACI. With ACE, they do. They want the lowest external package count. So you're not going to go with the pieces. You're not going to go with the skids. You're going to go with the, the cartons, the packages, the boxes, all those, um, boxes that are going to be, going to be contained in the skid. 
So looks like this XYZ Trucking Inc. followed this one to a T as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our 24-7 support team at 1-800-596-5176 